Hello, wonderful world, and a really warm welcome to those brothers and sisters who ride motorcycles like me. So today's video, what is it? Well, from the pictures of all the motorbikes you might have gathered, it's a motorcycle review. And the motorcycle in question is the Suzuki Aegis Inazuma 250. It's basically a Suzuki Inazuma with fairings and panniers. Before I begin the review, let me start with a photo shoot of the bike in a quite picturesque surrounding, I might add. <laughs> Enjoy. Oh, and lest I forget, at the very end, I'll give you a specification or what we call a fact sheet about the bike. Um, otherwise, it'll be talking about its pros and cons, positives and negatives, and issues that owners have reported. So, without further ado, shall we begin? I think we shall. So as mentioned, it's a 250cc motorcycle, a twin cylinder motorcycle, and it's made by Suzuki. Its original frame came in the form of a basic Inazuma, but then they made this Aegis probably for the police, because a lot of countries have police that ride these bikes. Now, I'm going through some rough terrain because I wanted to take this through a varied selection of terrain. This does well on even these rough surfaces, but this isn't hardcore off-road, but I would say this is more than adequate for this bike, and it's doing well. It's holding its own on the road, grip is very good, it doesn't seem to slip. It is a heavy bike for 250, and I think that's why it has such great stability on these kind of patches, these kind of tougher, rougher terrains. Jumping straight in with its first positive, I'd say this is a great utility bike. It's got built-in panniers and a great little top box. I point out little because it just barely gets a helmet, but it's adequate. In terms of another plus, it is its fuel efficiency. A 250cc motorcycle, if ridden as a 250 motorcycle, doesn't drink that much fuel. I've got from 35 kilometers per liter to about 42 depending on the terrain and how I ride. So that's pretty good, but I would recommend you don't push this too hard because it is, at the end of the day, a 250cc motorcycle. Next positive I have to confess to is how it maneuvers. It feels really light. It's actually quite a heavy bike for 250, but the center of gravity and the way the weight has been distributed, it feels nimble, very easy to maneuver and quite light. Third, positive I would have to say is its seating position. The Inazuma has clip-on uh, handlebars and this has a standard old-fashioned U-shaped handlebar which means it elevates the handle handles a little more than say the Inazuma so the seating position is more upright. From the outlook the windscreen looks to be a positive but in actual fact it's too small. It looks attractive but it doesn't deflect the wind properly. Another negative that people have mentioned, and I understand why, is that though it has panniers and a top box, all three are very small. So as a utility bike, it's good, but it could be better. I'm a realist, so a 250cc dual cylinder has limitations. A lot have said that the acceleration on this bike is poor and top speed is not all that great. But we have to bear in mind that this is not a thousand cc it's a quarter of that so i think the acceleration is more than adequate yet many have complained about it and top speed realistically i think going over 120 kilometers an hour or just over 70 is a bit too much for this bike so something that doesn't have abs should be ridden in a way where you appreciate it doesn't have abs i'm sure riders catch my drift a few problems have been reported by owners, and this is through searching through many, many forums, but these are the three that came up on top. The first one, vibrations. However, I've pushed this to 
dare I say, 130 kilometers per hour, which is just over 70 miles per hour, and I felt no vibrations. So I'm not sure if that's something to do with the tires or the alignment or something else, but I felt no vibrations myself. The next thing that was reported by owners is electrical problems, but I think most bikes can have those, and I don't think we should single out the Aegis on that front. Owners have also mentioned a lack of aftermarket parts, and after searching the internet in detail, I have to concur. Yes, it is one of those bikes where you are hard pushed to find aftermarket bits and bobs. So that's it folks, review over. But I did promise those specification sheets and I'm going to deliver. Thank you for watching and in particular those on two wheels, please, please ride safely and carefully. Until next time, God bless you all and thank you for watching. See you soon.